I want to start off by framing up what I've just observed in my own real estate, local real estate market. Okay. And I think that everybody's scenario on the numbers might be slightly different, at least here in the United States. Uh, but let me just talk through like what I've seen. And then I want to get your initial thoughts on this. If we go back to before COVID, so I'm just taking the start of 2020 and we look at what I would say is a pretty mediocre middle income type house in the area that I live, you're paying $500,000 back at this time in 2020, you're paying $500,000 to own this type of house. Um, the, the interest rate around this time was, let's just say 3%. And so if a person would make payments at 3% on that house for 30 years, the overall price that they paid for the home after those 30 years was $758,000. Now, today, in this area, that same home is going for about a million dollars. So it has, in those four years, uh, since the start of 2020, and now we're, you know, at the start of 2024, that half a million dollar house is now a million. You're dealing with 7% interest rates. And uh, instead of paying a million over the 30 years, you're now paying $2.4 million for that house. And so when we compare these two prices, in just four years time of 758,000 for effectively paying all the payments on that, on that house four years ago to paying $2.4 million for the exact same house today, four years later, that is 3.15 times more expensive, three times more expensive than what it was four years ago, which is insane, which is totally, absolutely mind blowing insane for that type of move in four years. You're here to, as a, as an expert in real estate, and this is, this is the number I can't wait to tell you <laughs> more, more the audience. Cause I know, you know, this number, yeah. but if you would have bought Bitcoin for the value of that $500,000 house back in 2020, that house cost you 70 Bitcoin. Today, if you bought that same house, which is now listed at a million, that house costs 22 Bitcoin for a reduction in price of 68% in four years. These numbers are crazy. And I think okay. that, that, uh, for people that are, so if you're living in a world of fiat and you're, and you're using leverage, the house got three times more expensive. If you're living in a Bitcoin world and paying Bitcoin for a house, it got 68% cheaper. This is a dichotomy that I don't think the, the, the planet can even comprehend. So what in the world do you say to somebody with this? Like, where do we, where do we even start this conversation with those hard hitting, ridiculous mathematics in your face? How do you start this conversation with somebody? How do you, how do you even begin to broach the subject, Leon? Not easy, to be honest with you. Um, I take two approaches. So the first approach is for an individual that just wants to save. Yeah. And the second approach is for a real estate developer. So a company whose business is it to provide housing to build real estate. I think the numbers that you just mentioned pretty much sum up the opportunity cost of mm. saving in real estate rather than saving in Bitcoin, right? Because Or the other way around, the, the, the opportunity cost of saving in Bitcoin relative to... Or the other way around, exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you if you if you look at Bitcoin just as a store value, it just it's a superior store value to to real estate, and it deflates as a at a rate that housing, even if you buy it on leverage and you finance the purchase of a house, you cannot keep up with the deflation of Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin has completely changed the dynamic because people now need to look for a different store of value. Real estate has been the number one store of value for the past fifty years since nineteen seventy one when the U.S. went off the gold standard, real estate has pretty much become the preferred store of value globally. There was a study by McKinsey that came out in 21, and it estimated that 67% of the world's wealth, around $300 trillion, are saved in real estate. But now that we have Bitcoin, the opportunity cost of putting your money in real estate is just too high, right? So saving a Bitcoin just makes more sense. Now, the question is, what problem does this bring for real estate investors? And if you look at the balance sheet of a real estate company, on the liability side, you have mostly, not only, but you have debt. Because real estate is a very debt-intense business. And as real interest rates go up, the liability side of the balance sheet is growing. It's growing massively. And now it has another negative consequence, what you just mentioned. As interest rates go up, financing becomes less affordable because the cost of financing over time increases. So less people can afford housing, which leads to less demand. And what we're seeing right now already Demand for real estate is going down, which means that prices of real estate go down. So if you're a real estate developer, you're faced with the issue of having increase in debt burden, but at the same time, there's less people willing to buy housing. And I believe it's important, it's very important for a real estate investor to bring Bitcoin on their balance sheet, right? Especially millennials and Gen Z, they have been priced out of real estate already because real estate has become so expensive, and now they can't afford it either because of financing. So in order to be honest with you, as a real estate developer, in order to survive, 
I think you need to bring in Bitcoin on your balance sheet. And I quickly also explain why. Bitcoin has, as we know, excellent monetary properties, and it will increase in price with increasing demand. And the only way, the only way to weather the inflationary pressure of the fiat system as a real estate developer is by owning Bitcoin and participating in the value increase of Bitcoin because, because real estate is a very credit intense business. If you're not able to increase your credit worthiness, you're not able to compete. And I believe going forward, banks will understand that those companies that hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet, they will be more credit worthy. And that allows you as a real estate developer to leverage the value of your real estate in Bitcoin, potentially refinance your real estate, buy Bitcoin with additional capital and build a healthy balance sheet that allows you to stay competitive. Because my prediction is just a prediction, I don't know, but I believe that a large number of real estate developers will go bust within the next coming 18 months. We can already see it in Europe, especially, but we can also see it in the US, in the US. You know, so much of it is an interest. You say it's it's capital intensive. You're, you're using lots of leverage to do this. Uh, it comes down to your credit worthiness. And, uh, you know, as you're, as you're trying to play this, when a person hears those numbers that I spouted off at the beginning of the show, they're saying, well, if interest rates go back down to the 3% level, based on the price doubling, I would want to I would want to buy more real estate again. Um, so I guess this this question is very speculative, but it, it gets to the essence of what a naysayer who's hearing that start of the show would be saying is, well, once interest rates come back down, I'm going to buy again, and then the prices will double and I'll make out like a bandit because I was highly levered. What is that person missing uh, when they're thinking about like what the trajectory of the next five to 10 years looks like, knowing what you know about real estate and Bitcoin combined? Yeah, I try to make an educated, educated guess. So number one, for the foreseeable future, I don't believe that interest rates or mortgage rates come down back to 3%. Inflation is just too high. You know, you need, you need interest rate at a 4 or 5% level in order to deal with inflation. That's number one. And number two, we are witnessing a paradigm shift. So why is real estate so expensive? It's not so expensive because of its utility value. It is so expensive because it has been priced away from its utility value. There's a financialization process that happened with the asset of real estate because as money loses purchasing power, people are forced to invest into scarce assets. And real estate has been the scarcest asset that has been accessible. But now we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a much better store of value. So I am assuming, I'm assuming that most of the monetary premium that sits in real estate, and it's up to 70% in the US and in Europe, up to 70% of the value of real estate is the monetary premium it carries as a store of value. I believe as Bitcoin comes into the equation, that monetary premium will eventually, over time, flow into Bitcoin, real estate will collapse to its utility value, and the deflation of Bitcoin will be a multiple times higher than the money that can be made with real estate. Even if interest rates go down to 3%, and I like to give an example, the following example that they usually give, because we are a real estate development company, and over the past three years, I had to deal or write reports for our employees and also for the people that I work with, helping them to understand why we need to integrate Bitcoin into our business. And the example I like to give is in 1995, if you were running a shop on a high street, you were forced to learn about the internet because e-commerce came in and e-commerce as a business model disrupted your business model. Mm. And I believe that Bitcoin is disrupting the real estate business model similar to how e-commerce disrupted the retail business model. And similar to how email is now the preferred way of sending information, I believe Bitcoin will become the preferred way of storing value. At this point of time, the preferred way of storing value is real estate. And because Bitcoin is superior as a store of value, it's scarcer. It is highly liquid. You can move it in times of crisis. It is difficult to tax and to destroy and cheaper to maintain. Bitcoin is in direct competition to real estate in its function as a store of value.